Ah. No. Oh, it's her. You need glasses? I've been thinking about what I would say for this convocation. So much to be told normally comes pretty naturally to me, but after days of reflection and several bottles of wine into it, I was no further along than when I started. Talking about Teresa's life is like talking about infinity. What would or could I say that was worthy of this occasion, this, this person? I needed help. Big guns, the bard. The sense and sensibility of Jane Austen, the perspicacity of Huxley, sensitivity of Rilke. So, first witness, Shakespeare. When I have seen by time's fell hand defaced the rich, proud cost of outworn, buried age, when sometimes lofty towers I see down raised and brass eternal slave to mortal rage, when I have seen the hungry ocean gain advantage on the kingdom of the shore, replacing store with loss and loss with store, and the firm soil win of the watery main, when I have seen such interchange of state and state itself confounded to decay, ruin has taught me thus to ruminate, that time will come and take my love away. This thought is as a debt which cannot choose, but weep to have that which it fears to lose. How does this pertain? Well, you do the math. But it does support one of my central ideas, and that is the common misconception among the untrained, uninitiated, and insensitive that think that Teresa has the single-minded focus of a beaver at a cottonwood tree. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's not true. It may look like it, and of course, the tree is going down either way. But it is not the case, and I will let Huxley <clears throat> illuminate. Single-mindedness is mindedness is a perfectly good virtue in a cow or a baboon, but in an animal claiming to be of the same species as Shakespeare, it's a disgrace. <laughs> Teresa is not single-minded. She's just single-hearted with the abiding faith of Abraham. You see it every day and in her life as a whole, on the whole. Next witness, Jane Austen quote on history. The quarrels of popes and kings with wars and pestilences on every page and the men everywhere, all of them so good for nothing and hardly a woman at all. It's very tiresome. Now, what does this have to do with anything? Well, imagine, if you will, a platonic republic conceived and governed by single-hearted people with the turbocharged energy, faith, Love, generosity, diligence, and integrity of Teresa. Turbotopia. Turbotopia. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This, this is heady stuff, but it, it, gets, it gets better. Along with these exemplary qualities, Teresa governs with a great sense of beauty and fun and humanity and the cool confidence of a Catholic priest with a royal flesh. <laughs> a kind of moral dexterity that enables her to countenance a little pilfering of artichokes and strawberries and the free and fluid sharing of non-transferable ski lift tickets and museum passes. <laughs> these indiscretions, these sins, are surely not against the Holy Ghost and probably not deadly. Besides, taken in the context of all she has contributed to the arts, to the ski industry, and to the patronage and production of fresh produce, Teresa is not only paid in full, her credit score is off the charts. As for myself, and I'm going to call me here, just one word, Lordy. Lordy, I cannot bear the mental gymnastics of imagining where I'd be without her. Her beneficial influence on who I am and what I've become is beyond reckoning. It would be safe, but not suffice, to say that because of her love and nurture, I have fared well. Without it, I'd have fared worse. <laughs> Some of you might not know, I sure didn't, when I came to live in Turbotopia, <laughs> I was confused, angry, traumatized, cocky, smartass, delinquent. <laughs> 
I suppose I not had much some endearing qualities and redeeming virtues. <laughs> but he didn't get worse. Anyway. But I was, and I was not a dull knife. I was rather sharp, maybe uh, double-edged, and uh, there were big dings, what knife sharpeners call burrs in the blade. What I did not realize or fully appreciate until much further along the inclined plane of my life is that Teresa was exactly what I needed. A juggernaut grinding wheel against which my life would be honed and polished. <laughs> and sparks did fly. <laughs> which brings me to Rilke, who said, that man does not want to win. This is how he grows, by being defeated decisively over and over again by forces greater than himself. <laughs> I thank you, Teresa, for being one of life's great forces. <laughs> and now, to conclude, in a funny little rhyme, men, some to business, some to pleasure take. But every woman is at heart a rake. Men, some to public, some to private strife. But every lady would be queen for life. Long live the queen. Wow. Yeah. I don't, I don't have a toast anymore. I got no toast. <laughs> <laughs> you better have a good one lined up for that after that. What's that? You better have a good one in your pocket. <laughs>